Welcome to the Oculus Channel. Thanks for watching today. And Future Press Publishing is at it again because we have a brand new player's guide for Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, called Books of Knowledge, Volume 3. Now, obviously, this is the third book in the series, Volume 1 and Volume 2, focus on just the base game of Elden Ring. And this one here focuses on just Shadow of the Earth Tree. I have to say, like, this DLC is just absolute DLC perfection as far as, like, the environment, the atmosphere it creates, the enemies, the bosses. I mean, this is a uh, roadmap for any future game that wants to make an amazing DLC. But this particular book here, it's going to go through every single map, every single item, every single enemy, every single boss, overall lore, overall statistics, and just really break the game down like no other company knows how to. Future Press Publishing puts out the absolute best player's guides out there, and we're going to go through every single page one at a time and just analyze it, review it, and just really take a memory or a stroll down Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Memory Lane. Now, if you do want to get this particular book, I do recommend getting on it sooner than later because Future Press only does one uh, publishing of their books or one print of their books, and it goes to, like, I guess, their vault of sorts. So the prices do tend to skyrocket a little bit. So if you want to get it for a reasonable price, Amazon has it now as well as the Future Press website. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really do enjoy these books. But let's go ahead and dive into Books of Knowledge, the final volume. All right, so the book here, you can already see, like, the craftsmanship of Future Press. I mean, there is just part none for these guides. They did include a map of the overall the realm of shadow. And um, I have to say, like, I enjoy these posters. I enjoy these maps, but I hate that they are folded up in the front because I'm just never going to be able to hang them and get all these individual creases out. And so it's like, it's a cool feature, but um, I don't know. I'm probably never going to use it. One side is just simply the map itself. The other side is going to show as far as like all the uh, waypoints and points of grace on the map. Like I said, it's a cool addition, but me personally, I'm probably not going to use it a whole lot. Now, as you get into the actual book here, we do have an introduction from Future Press themselves. They talk about their experience with Shadow of the Erd Tree, Elden Ring in general, Miyazaki, their time with um, From Software, and just a um, true testament of how close they work with the overall company. You can pause the video at uh, any given time and you can zoom in on any of these pages. They're all captured in 4D or 4K quality, not 4D quality. That'd be something totally different. And so um, you can zoom in, investigate it, and uh, read every bit of detail if you want to pause the video. We do have a map legend here is what's going to be included on every single map. And there are a lot of maps throughout this guide. We have the overview here as far as the table of contents. Chapter 1 is the world guide. Chapter 2 is the dungeon guide. Chapter 3 is the bestiary. Chapter 4 is the armaments and equipment. Chapter 5 is the quest guide. Chapter 6 is extras as far as like additional content. And we do have a little bit of a uh, intro here um, right behind the table of contents as well. It's going to talk about setting the stage as far as like how to get into the uh, Shadow Realm, you know, talking about Moog, all different things that you have to do. We talk about the new progression system as far as like the Shadow Realm Blessing, the Scattered Tree Fragments, how to upgrade your character because once again, it really didn't matter what level you were, it's going to really uh, be based upon those fragments. Talks about the new game plus as far as like what the HP is of all the enemies in the base game. And then in New Game Plus, so you can uh, sort of prepare your character a little bit. Talks about how to navigate the uh, Shadow Realm. Talks about all of Nicholas Crosses throughout. You know, the recommended path to go on. The Legacy Dungeon. And we're going to get into all of this and more as we journey through the uh, individual chapters here. Uh, new combat mechanics as far as like the Spontaneous Guard. Because that's pretty cool. They actually added, you know, extra uh, ways of fighting inside the DLC instead of just extra areas and enemies. As far as buffs and debuffs, how to make your character a little bit powerful or a little bit less powerful in some cases, depending on what direction you want to go into. And then we have the uh, world guide. Now, wait a second. Wasn't chapter... Hang on. Let's check that. Look at that. Now, look. The It says chapter one, world guide. And then over here, chapter two, world guide. Look, a misprint that, that fast in the book. And even has over here, chapter one, world guide. Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a misprint. We'll see what chapter uh, three says when we get to it. Perhaps there are two chapter twos and they correct themselves as they're going. But look at the overall picture here. I mean, Future Press does a fantastic job as far as like capturing landscape and just showing the overall aesthetics of the uh, From Software games. And I have to say, Shadow of the Earth Tree is one of the most beautiful, haunting uh, aesthetics that From Software has ever created. Talks about using the world guide. It comes down here as far as like the items on the page, their recommended routes, the step numbers they recommend, and the uh, core waypoints of like extra information on the maps. We have the overall realm of shadow showed here. The guide is going to go into every one of those areas and really break down the uh, overall progression system as we get through it. It's going to start off the gravesite plane, and you can see already like, like right here, like look how many points of interaction or NPCs or items are just hidden out in the opening area of the NPC. And that's a true testament to uh, from software here. They can jam pack the area full of things to interact with, but still at the same time, 
feels completely open and feels like your own journey as you're going through it. And there is so much stuff that you can miss, which is where this guide does come into play. Now it's going to go through a recommended path here as far as like number one, two, three, four, five. It's going to continue on as we go. And uh, like I said earlier, you can pause the video, zoom in on any of these pages. But if you don't want to miss anything as far as like lore wise or item wise or power up wise, and you want to make sure you 100% the game in every single way, this guide is really going to help you out with that because it's going to make sure you uh, pause at all the appropriate spots and get every possible item that you need along your journey. Now, I do know the fun of a game like Elden Ring is your own self-exploration here, going through it, finding your own route, you know, discovering this on your own. And so I recommend like maybe uh, going through the game on your own the first time and the second time go through it with a guide like this just to make sure you don't miss out on any of the cool lore as you go and i'm sort of going through it quickly here but it's going to show every single map of every cave uh, every fort every catacomb every core item in all of those areas and just like there is so much to explore in the uh, just the initial area of the game and that right there it just really shows like how much they truly put into shadow of the earth tree like all of that was just simply the first area the uh scatter tree altus here once again all of the core um npcs items that you can interact with just jam-packed but at the same time when you're journeying through it it doesn't feel overwhelming and uh, they have a screenshot for every single individual um highlight they have as far as like quest lines um you know points of the interest that you want to go through different enemies that you're going to encounter i mean they really are oh yes the great red bear and we're going to get to the bestiary here in a second go through all the individual enemies we're not going to focus on too much on this particular part because this is once again just the overall um maps of the game and sort of the, um, I guess, core path to go on as you're working through it. They are really sort of skipping over the uh, Bonnie Village pretty quick there. It's a small part for such a, a core uh, lore heavy part of the game. Uh, but we're gonna continue on here. We got the uh, cathedral down there as well. Just journeying through it fairly quickly here. Um, the Finger Ruins, see this is once again, they're really sort of skipping over some of the core bosses, but that's because we're gonna get to them in the uh, bestiary a little bit later. Uh, more catacombs you can journey through. Now we're in the uh, land of the tower. You know, we got the base here. And truth be told, this area does look a little bit more vacant than some of the other ones. But at the same time, compared to most other games that are coming out uh, nowadays, it's still um, pretty jam-packed. And even if it is sort of vacant, you're still taking in the overall scenery. And um, I don't know, just enjoying the world that they have crafted in Shadow of the Erd Tree. I really feel like you could almost make it like an entire um, ASMR channel of just simply journeying around the world of Elden Ring and just exploring it. No enemies, no fighting, just sort of exploring all the landscape and just really taking it in. This area here was truly a, a beautiful area as we're journeying through it. It was the tree sentinels, the individual flowers. It reminded me more of an area of like um, Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, where you go to Aerith's home a little bit. I don't know. Now, ooh, the Abyssal Woods. Now, if there was ever an area in Shadow of the Earth Tree that felt like Elden Ring, this was it. And um, this was probably my favorite area in the entire game. I love the uh, overall aesthetics. I love the bosses. I love the enemies. This was just a hauntingly beautiful area. We got the entire mansion that you're going to go through. This was just like gaming. Per that was a really short area for um, what I called gaming perfection. Good gracious. Very short for my favorite area in the entire uh, DLC. But uh, anyway, we continue on here. We got the gravesite plain on the southern shore. This here had a really cool aesthetic when it came to like having all the blue flowers. Um, I did like the way that looked as an overall. Once again, not my favorite area of the game, but still a, a, a cool aesthetic in its own right. I mean, just look at some of these screenshots. That, that is haunting right there. And they could make like an entire poster of like almost anything from this game. I mean, it's just a um, craftsmanship to the max from, uh, from software. I'm making an overall aesthetic that is just hauntingly beautiful in every way. We're continuing on here. We do have some of the uh, bosses mentioned here because we are journeying into the uh, dragon side mountains and whatnot. We got the ancient dragon over here. We got Bell the Dread. Bell the Dread was, was quite the boss fight. That was a really uh, fun one at the same time. Now we have chapter two, the dungeon guide. So it was a misprint in the book where they said chapter one, world guide. Now it's chapter two, dungeon guide. So they did correct themselves, but it is a, a small error in the book. And so we're going to go through every one of the major dungeons inside the... Um, overall game now there's not a ton of them you know it's a, it is still a dlc and um, a large dlc and is very much deserving of the uh, game awards getting game of the year in my opinion because it's like a whole game in of itself compared to like other games of this uh, day and age but anyway like um there are still only like three or four little levels we're going to go through or three or four large levels i mean good gracious like look at that like I, I skipped over it pretty fast but this is all the tower settlement here i mean all of this this is one massive dungeon that you can journey through 
And so even though there's only like uh, three or four inside the DLC, they are so large, like it really does make up for it as you're going through it. Now it does once again tell you the recommended path that they say go through it all. Uh, so if you don't want to miss anything as far as like item wise, lore wise, enemy wise, you want to explore everything. This guide is going to tell you exactly what to do with a picture by picture basis on like how to accomplish that individual mission. So um, fantastic uh, props to the company here for breaking all of that down. There is no telling how much work this truly took. Now we're getting to the uh, Divine Beast dancing line as far as like the boss encounter. They are going to break that down more in the uh, boss section, the bestiary. But you know, right here is just going to give you an overview of the individual um, bosses. We have the Shadow Keep here. Boy, that was a fun level, the Shadow Keep. I have to say, like, we approached those boats inside the uh, courtyard. Man, I don't know, like, something about that just, like, really pulled me in. Makes you want to know more about the lore as you're going to the church district, the flooded area. I mean, some of the stuff makes you want to just jump back into the game all over again because you forget about the area because the game is just so jam-packed with different places to explore. When you see it on here, you're like, oh, yeah, the flooded area. I forgot all about that. And so, um, I don't know, makes you want to jump back into the game and go through it all over again. And so, ooh, the specimen storehouse. Now, this was an amazing area in the game when it came to lore and just, like, um, making you want to really understand, like, what is happening in the Shadow Realm? Why did it all get hidden away? What is America about here? Oh, the ancient ruins of Rod. Now, this was an area that I actually found sort of hard to explore. Um, beautiful area, cool to explore. Looked like uh, ancient Mesopotamia, but... Um, was a little bit more on the difficult side as far as like navigating my way around. I felt like as I went through it, I might have missed some things. So it's going to be really great to go back through and um, just sort of explore it again and make sure I didn't miss any of the core items that I could have gotten. Because like I said, even if you platinum the game, it doesn't mean you did everything in the game. And so it just means you got all the uh, core achievements that, um, you know, few, uh, from software mentioned. It doesn't mean you actually explored everything. Ah, yes. Romina, the Saint of the Bud. Now, that is a really cool boss fight as far as like, you know, because if when you journey through it, like one of my favorite things was Scarlet Rot. And so like to get to the um, queen of Scarlet Rot, basically. And um, I really wish I knew more about the lore of her. I know a little bit. I know she's in the DLC trailer and I know um, some of it, but, you know, I wish I knew a little bit more. Uh, journey through here. Man, these maps are just extraordinarily detailed as we work our way through it. The spiral rise. So we are in the final area here, getting ready to fight against the consort Radon, the gate of divinity. Oh my gosh. And we are almost there. I guess that was, oh no, never mind. We are here. There's fighting against the consort Radon. And so, um, whew, what a boss fight. Like that right there is like one of the hardest boss fights I've ever had in the game, period. Now we're journeying to do a chapter three to bestiary. And this is probably my favorite chapter in the entire game because it's going to break down every uh, single enemy, every single boss that you're going to possibly encounter here. We have the uh, Shadow Undead, you know, our, our base little enemy here. Talks about a very good uh, strategy to take them out. Honestly, you're probably going to take them out without much of a strategy. We have the uh, Grave Bird. And talk about like a good update on the uh, Death Right Bird. That was a really cool um, direction to go in. Once again, strategies. Mesmer's Soldiers and Mesmer's Foot Soldiers. Um, and once again, these are... Cool little uh, tidbits, but you really don't need a lot of strategy on them. Oh, the jar dwellers. Talk about a haunting lore. The idea that they were taking shamans and sticking them in a jar, and this is what's coming out of them. Man, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about it. It's just, just crazy. Uh, spider scorpion, uh, the baby version of that. <laughs> the uh, shadow undead, as far as like the manservant, the manfly, um, the spirit ill. I still don't really understand the uh, spirit ills. I need to look more into the actual lore of them. Catacomb Conjurer. I'm not going to read through all of these, but um, you can see them as we go. Some of the, I mean, this looks straight out of uh, Bloodborne. I really do feel like this was the closest to Bloodborne 2 that we're ever going to get. Because this game felt more like Bloodborne 2 to me than it did, uh, I guess, an expansion of Elden Ring. I guess that's not really true. It, did, it definitely felt like an expansion of Elden Ring, but um, I don't know. It had a Bloodborne feel to it. This fella here, the Curse Blade, I thought it was going to be a boss because they, they um, basically made a, a whole post about it on Instagram. And it's just a normal enemy inside the game. There is a boss variant, but it's still just a normal enemy in the game. Uh, now we got the uh, Spider Scorpion, the large version. Not the baby version, the large version. Continuing on here. The Black Knight, that's almost harkening back to, um, you know, Dark Souls. 
the Fire Knights. Now that does look like something that's like directly out of Dark Souls 3. That could have easily fit into that. You know, there were a lot of stuff that was like in um, Dark or Elden Ring that was like leftover assets from Dark Souls 3. So you have to wonder like, was, was that one of them? They finally just stuck it into the game? Who knows? Now we're getting into uh, some of the more core ones here. Man, now that looks like something you see in like Lord of the Rings. The Ghost Flame Dragon. Now those were really cool looking. I didn't think they were as hard as some of the other dragons, but definitely one of the cooler looking dragons in the game. Uh, the Great Red Bears. Now we're getting into it. That is a ferocious, demonic looking bear. And you can even see some of the uh, Crucible influences, getting some of the, um, you know, the horns on it as well. Uh, basically, you know, harkening back to the lore of the Shadow Realm. Count your mirror, Mother of Fingers. We're getting into all that. Now that is an armor set everybody truly, uh, really went after when the DLC launched there. Now this is a boss fight that no one really talked about, but I thought it was a really cool fight. The Elder Inquisitor. Um, I enjoyed the atmosphere to it, but once again, that was probably my favorite area of the game, which makes sense that I enjoyed it more than most. Uh, Jagged Peak Drake, that's just a regular old dragon. We, we fought plenty of those throughout the game. Dry Leaf Dane, what a mysterious little character who did not like to talk. Um, fun the cheese, but did not like to talk. Feels like a little bit of a texture on the page there. Not really sure. Divine Beast Dancing Lion. That was a, I saw a video somewhere where they actually like did the, um, what's underneath the uh, overall coat and you can actually see the individual soldiers underneath it. A cool little um, fact there. Rolana, the Twin Moon Knight. That was a cool boss fight. Once again, feels like it's straight out of a Dark Souls 3, at least in my opinion. The Golden Hippopotamus. Um, that was a challenging one, but still fun nonetheless. Oh my gosh, Commander Gaius, that was probably the hardest fight in almost the entire game. Well, Radon's probably harder, but that one, if you didn't cheese him, incredibly difficult. The Scattered Tree Avatars, now those were so much fun. Like, I love that boss fight. That was a ton of fun. Um, just trying to figure out like the different stages, where to hit him, um, just the overall aesthetics of the arena. Oh, Mesmer the Impaler. Now that is a classic, classic boss I've ever seen one. Just a um, overall great lore, great uh, combat. Just great arena you're fighting in. Perfect, perfect boss fight. Meteor to Mother of Fingers. Um, not the most perfect boss fight, but still an uh, enjoyable one nonetheless. The music for it, some of the best soundtrack in the game. Uh, Midra. Now that was from my favorite area and just a really cool lore when you uh, fight the boss fight, you know, realizing like what the Frenzied Flame has actually done to him in his life. Uh, the Putrescent Knight. Some people say that was supposed to be the Knight of the Glomide Queen which um, does expand the lore a little bit of exactly who, uh, you know, Mikula is here. Bell the Dread, like I said, that was a um, crazy difficult fight, but um, also really fun when you had, uh, what's his name, helping out, uh, Curse You Bell, what was his name? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Romina, Saint of the Bud, does it have a little bit more lore on it here? It does, I'll come back and read that later because um, that is one of the coolest boss fights in the game, and I really do love the idea of Scarlet Rot as well. Uh, we got all of Mikula's loyalists here that you have to fight against in the end of the game. And then we have the Promised Consort Radon and uh, talked about all the preparation. And there's going to be a lot of preparation. I've actually not fought um, Consort Radon since they've done the um, uh, patch where they've nerfed him a little bit. I've only fought him pre-nerf, pre so maybe he's a little bit easier than I remember. But good lord, look how much they're breaking down that one particular boss fight. That right there tells you like just how difficult <laughs> that really is. And the Furnace Golems. I guess they saved that for last for some reason. An odd one to put there at the very end. Now we have chapter four, armaments and equipments. Now, um, man, what a cool, cool picture. Now in the last uh, guide, they actually have like um, small posters or small um, prints. And this would have been really cool to have that instead of the map because I would like to have a print of that. That's a, a pretty cool little area to explore. Uh, weapons and shields. I'm not going to, you know, spend too much time on talking about this. It's going to go through every little bit of, um, as far as like weapon type in the game, the stats, the attack, you know, what type of um, equipment load is going to be, you know, different strategies. And so you can sort of uh, slow down this if you want to look like look at an individual weapon. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining it, but uh, feel free to pause the video and zoom in on your favorite weapon in order to get a better idea of how they recommend using it. Because who knows, like you may be using it one way and they recommend a different way. And you're like, I've never tried it that way. And all of a sudden, like you're gaming or your skill level, you know, goes up a whole whole different tier there. 
or maybe you're using the better ways and the guide is using. Who, who knows? But you can zoom in on any of these and um, take a, a, a quick gander at it. I know me personally, like when I find a good weapon in the game, it is it takes a lot for me to swap away from it. And so like in the DLC, like I experimented with uh, some of these, but for the most part, the weapons I went into the DLC with, I, I kept throughout the majority of the game. I don't play from software games for the weapons. I know some people do. I play more for the overall environment and the lore and the bosses. And um, if I just find myself a good weapon, I'm going to tend to stick with it nearly the entire experience. But um, you can zoom in and take a look at these. Um, the Beast Claws were pretty cool, though, I have to say. That reminded me a little bit more of Bloodborne. If you can't tell, Bloodborne's like my uh, favorite from software game. So I'm going to, anytime I get something hearkening back to it, I'm going to mention it just simply because, like I said, it's my favorite. But um, we got our bookmark officially coming through here. I'm glad to see it did not stain the pages. When I went through the uh, Bloodborne remaster guide, it actually stained my pages, which I was a little bit disappointed with. But I had to send that back, book back anyway because it had a rip in it. So um, the second one did not have a stain. But uh, the craftsmanship on this one, you know, top tier. Journey into the armor here. Armor I don't experiment a whole lot with unless I'm like going into a particular boss and he's like a um, particular buff on my character. But um, once I find a cool look, I tend to stick with that as well. But there were a lot of great mix, uh, mix match as far as uh, different outfits that you could have. It's um, I'd say it's borderline the fashion soul of Dark Souls 2. I mean, Dark Souls 2, you could have the most options as far as what your character looked like. And um, Elden Ring is uh, rivaling that to a very high degree. The different talismans, now that is one I, I actually will miss with as far as like modifying my character more as you journey through. Because you can really buff your character a great deal with the uh, talismans. Sorceries, um, I did not do as much with sorcery. I focused more on um, a, a faith build. And so incantations is more of what I was interested in. And they did bring some pretty cool incantations into the DLC. And so, I don't know, Faith Build has like always like pulled me into uh, this particular game. I think it's something to do with like the uh, color of the animations as well. It just feels like you are um, almost like a uh, Greek god or Mesopotamian god journeying through the area. And um, I don't know, it's just fantastic. Ashes of War, I will admit that when it comes to Ashes of War, I sort of stuck with my uh, base game stuff for a lot of that. But here it is a breakdown if you want to experiment with any of them and uh, find out what is best for your character build. Unique skills. Yet for all the individual weapons, you can go through your unique skills. Make sure you are utilizing them to the overall greatest capabilities. I just cannot imagine like how long it took Future Press to go through this entire game gather all this information and then break it down and put it in word and picture form for us to in, uh, enjoy here. Like, it's just, it's phenomenal. Spirit Ashes, I, I do love myself a Spirit Ash. I know some people say like, it's cheating to be the boss of a Spirit Ash. No, it's not. It's part of the game, it's built in there. Utilize them, enjoy them. And um, I don't know, it's sort of fun to see them fight beside you um, throughout a boss battle. Items, different tools, you know, different ones you can find throughout the game different meats and medicines. I will say, like, I never crafted a whole lot in Elden Ring. If I didn't find the item on its own, the chances of me crafting to get it, <laughs> pretty darn slim. I'm just more of a um, exploration type player instead of crafting. Uh, consumable weapons and ammunitions. You just really don't realize, like, how much is in a game until you really break it down. I wonder if there's like a single item that they missed. Like they went through the whole thing. They realized after they finished the guide, like, dang it. We left out like a, um, I don't know, like a, a non-swollen grape. And they're like, it, we should have put that into the guide. You have to wonder, did they miss something? Is the non-swollen grape um, missing from the guide? I don't know. Different cookbooks. I like to collect them. Didn't really use them. And there were a lot of cookbooks. I didn't realize like how much of the game back there was really just a... Uh, cooking chapter five quest guide now if you're trying to truly defeat the game and get all the lore the quest guide is a very very important part of the game it tells you the progression because it is so easy to get locked out of a quest or you choose a different option and then all of a sudden like that quest line closes out and you need to uh, focus on a different quest line or you go through the entire game and you didn't do like any of the quest and um I'm telling you, you miss out on a lot of it if you don't get some of the uh, quest dialogue. I know when I went into the uh, DLC here, I had watched so many lore videos. I was 
just like dying of thirst when it came to every little bit of quest dialogue they were going to give me because I wanted to try to figure out the true story of Mikola and the Land of Shadows and America and all of that. And so um, this here is going to break it down even more because I'm sure there's something that I missed, but you can go through, you can read every little bit of individual dialogue. You can see if you missed anything, every choice that you can make um, for every individual character. I mean, like it is, oh, man, the amount of time it would take to just write all of that out Dry Leaf Dane's back, St. Trina. Now, that's one that everyone should uh, look more into as far as getting the uh, lore behind that. Count your mirror. I like how they've actually broken it down somewhat related to the individual events in the game as well. Oh, Igon. That was the one who was helping us with uh, um, Bale. I thought it said Horn Scent and Grandma. <laughs> Grandam makes much more sense, doesn't it? Horn set grandma. I guess it's like uh, America's grandmother. Now we're down to the extras. This area right here, um, that looks almost more akin to um, uh, uh, Demon Souls and the Nexus. You gotta admit that it does look similar. Shadow Realm progression. Let's see what they are talking about here. Um, oh, of course, the recommended path to go on. That was sort of assumed anyway when it comes to, um, you know, the uh, path that they laid out in the overall worlds. But I guess if you didn't quite get it, you know, they could get it there as well. The Blessings Guide, if you want to get all the blessings in the game. Once again, breaking all of that down. The different builds that they recommend. Obviously, you are free to make your own build. But if you want to try to get yourself overpowered, these are the builds that they do recommend you uh, follow. I personally find it more fun to uh, make your own build. Even when it comes to like looking up stuff online, I would prefer to make your own build. Make the character truly unique, truly yours. Concept artwork gallery. Ooh, concept art. Now, this is going to be more of what um, I'm more intrigued by as far as like stuff that you want as a print to hang on the wall. Because you can make like an entire room of just Elden Ring from software art. And uh, someone could journey to your house and they look at it and never played a from software game at all. And just see this like dark medieval artwork and they'd be like, this stuff is awesome looking. And um, it is. There, there is no denying. Now that looks so much like ancient Mesopotamia. And I do know they use ancient Mesopotamia as some of the um, inspiration for the game. And um, Mesopotamian religious and um, culture is fascinating to look into. I actually have a, a degree in history. And so when it comes to you know lore and such as that, it's part of the reason I'm so interested in it. This was the boats I was talking about earlier in the Shadow Keep. Sword of Night. And then we have the indexes here to close it out. Um, bringing in all the different things you could look back for throughout the game so you don't have to necessarily flip through every page and then we have the credits and the thanks at the end as well and that is the close of the book overall guys fantastic guide once again if you want to pause the video slow it down look back at something i know I went through it pretty quick but that is every page in the book 4k quality fantastic book uh, future press makes the best and i am so happy to add this to the overall collection but if you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel check out my other videos listed up above and go out there find a great game to play simply have a great rest of the day